Here we're going to talk about reusing XAML views. So our goal is to create a component and then use it either on a different page or in a completely different application. This is the example that we'll use. It's a login view. And let's just take a couple of minutes to talk about what this thing does. Uh, the first thing that's interesting is it's going to take in a string from the client code and use that as the prompt here. Because remember, this view right here is going to in, be embedded in someone else's code. They're our client. When they instantiate this thing, they're going to give us a string, and we'll take that string and load it into the UI for them. We have a couple of text entry fields. That's pretty straightforward. And then we have a button. When the user clicks on that button, we, inside our component, are going to retrieve the values for the username and password, and then we're going to raise our own event and pass those values back to our client. So we're not going to do the actual validation of the password. We're just going to send it over to our client. Our UI is going to be done in XAML and our behavior in code behind. Here's our UI. First thing is that prompt we talked about, then a couple of controls for the username, similar thing for a password, a button, notice with a click handler installed, and everything arranged in a grid. There's two interesting bits of the code behind. The first is that prompt here. Right? Notice we have a name on the label, and then code behind that loads the client's value into our UI here. And, and, and there are more clever ways to do this. That's the simplest way I could think of, but you could use something like data binding, for example. The other interesting bit is the login button. We have a click handler installed on that button. When the user clicks the button, we raise our own event, and we pass the username and password along to the client. So now we know what we're trying to package. The next step is actually grouping that stuff together into a reusable view. And the, the way you do that is with something called a content view. So a content view is a container. So it can hold both our UI and our code behind, in, and it can group it into a single unit. But itself, it is a view, which means it can be embedded into a larger context, for example, into a page. So here's how you do it. There's our UI. Notice we've just taken the grid that we had before and then used content view as the root node for our XAML. In our code behind, all we do is inherit from the content view class. We're going to have two files, the .xaml file and the .xaml.cs file. Xamarin Studio has a nice template that will stub out both of those files for you. So now we have our UI component defined. We'd next like to package it so that our clients can use it easily. There's a couple of ways to do it. Here's the simplest one. We could just include it directly in our app. And that would let us use it across different pages within this same app. A more general option is to create a separate library, for example, a Xamarin Forms class library, and define the um, component in there. And, and now the component is separate from the current application and can be reused across any application we need. So this is the more general case. So let's finish talking about this one here. So we'd like to now use this view in our application. Again, we have it packaged in its own library. The first step is everyone that wants to use it needs to reference that library. So it's both the Xamarin Forms application project, the first one there, and the platform specific project. So everyone needs to reference the library. You need a prefix in your XAML, and this prefix just tells the XAML parser where this login view class lives. So notice it contains the assembly and namespace where this uh, UI component is defined and then you include one of these views on your page using the prefix. And finally, notice that you can set properties. So there's prompt equals, and we will, inside the component, grab that string and load it into our label. And then there's a subscription to the login views login event. So when the user clicks the login button inside the view, the onLogin method here inside the page will get raised.